AJ Francis, top dollar has arrived. How are things going for you right now? What's up? I'm blessed, man. I'm here. I'm back home in Maryland right now. As you can tell, you know what I'm saying? I, uh, I'm spending time with my family before the big camp food drive tomorrow. I've been doing a lot of media in the area too, just getting the word out. I've been doing a lot of national media too. You know, who else in the world does Pat McAfee and Scott Van Pelt and Alicia A. Tooth in the same week? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, who else is doing Busy it? Busy like man. That, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there are, of course, a lot of sweet things happening, which we will get into, but I want to kick things off with the canned food drive happening November 18th at the University of Maryland. Your dad gave back to his community growing up. Now you mm -hmm. are giving back to your community. This is the seventh installment. So tell me about how important it is for you to follow in those footsteps. You know, it's really important to me. My dad was a shining example of how you should be as a man and in your community. Um, I wouldn't be have it successful without my dad. I wouldn't have made it to Division One football without my dad. I wouldn't have made it to the NFL without my dad. I wouldn't have been in WWE without my dad. My dad supported me my whole life um, and everything that I ever wanted to do. He always believed in me. And he also supported his community. He cared about the people in his community. Um, and, you know, this is my seventh annual canned food drive. But we were doing canned food drives way longer than seven years ago. This is just now it's my event, you know. Mm -hmm. We were doing it when I was in high school um, with Sarah's house. It's transitional housing. Um, it's a shelter for, you know, kids and, you know, a lot of times moms with their kids. Um, you know, so we've done trunk or treat for Halloween. We've done toys for tots and for Christmas. We've done back to school for some school supplies. I mean, um, we did a charity basketball game where we just raised money. So it's like any and every way that we can support Sarah's house, we try because it literally is five minutes from where I grew up. It's five minutes from my, from our, uh, from where my Nana still lives. So like, um, it, it's really important to give back to that community to me because, you know, I, from that community, I mean, I'm definitely one of the most successful people that have come from there, but like, my goal was not, a lot of people, their goal is to get out of situations like that. And while my goal was to get out, it was to get out and come back and put the ladder down so other people can get out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's not just me. I don't, I want to be the person that helps everybody succeed in our community and not just myself. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity that the University of Maryland provides me with, with this camp food drive every year. And it's just big, man. It's, it's, it gets bigger every year. It's incredible, man. Just good people for a good cause. Is this something you mm -hmm. see yourself doing until you until you can't any longer? Because I can just feel the passion coming from you as you speak about it. It means a lot. Yeah, I am. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be doing this canned food drive till I can't can food drive. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna be doing this until the day I kick the bucket. Um, this is something that is that important to me. This is my community. Um, you know, all the accolades I have in my career from the NFL to WWE and all those things. They're great and they provide me a platform to be able to do these things that I love to do. But like, this is a passion of mine, taking care of people that that need the help because, you know, I've known people that have lived in Sarah's house, you know? It's, so it's like, it's not just nameless, faceless people. They're like, this is my community, right? And these are the people that I care about. Um, so it's like all the, you know, Madison Square Garden with LA night, Thursday night football, um, you know, Thanksgiving night versus Eli Manning, like all these cool things that I've done in my career, like the feeling of dropping off these canned goods after the event every year is up there with it because those other things are personal successes, but this is a success of helping others then it's not just me it's all the people that bring canned goods canned goods and and baby wipes and baby formula and it's all those people it's the people that stand out in the cold with me to collect the things like my dad like my uncle like my aunt shell like you know I, everybody all my friends from college that come you know my old radio buddies that come you know like everything it's just great to be able to to bring everybody together for a good cause well, for everyone listening, if you are in the area, definitely be sure to stop by the university this Saturday, November 18th to support. Because just from hearing you talk about it, this thing's massive. And I'm sure it's going to yeah. be a lot of people showing out, not only within your community, but from the outskirts too. Because um, I'm yeah. very excited to see. I hope that photo of you with all of the goods that came that day will be posted. And we'll see it everything will. that went down. <laughs> it will. It will. And the cool thing is like, 
we get lucky with the game because it's at the football game. So if you are going to come and donate, if you come to the it's University of Maryland versus University of Michigan. Michigan is the number two ranked team in the country right now. So if the season ended tomorrow, they'd be up for the national championship. You know, so like it's a two for that's folks. A, that's a big <laughs> game. You know, that's a really big game. Yeah. So to be able to come out and see a big game and then actually be able to give back and help people in the community. I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. That's awesome. Well, we won't get into this next topic too heavily right now because genuinely mm-hmm. I want to dive deep into music in a moment, but when it does come to your time in WWE, the wrestling is always mm-hmm. fun, of course, but how surreal mm-hmm. was it having hit row and being able to merge two of your biggest passions into one? Cause that's a rarity for a lot of people. Man, that was amazing. The cool thing for me, the coolest thing for me about Hit Row was the fact that, like, Hunter just let us breathe. Like, Hunter never let anybody write for us. Like, he knew that we had to do it ourselves or it wouldn't be done right. You know, Hunter just let us run. And um, he let it, he knew what I was capable of, what we were capable of. And the cool thing for me is that, like, the boys and the girls in the back loved it. Like, People love working with us. Like people have this make-believe narrative that I'm hard to work with. But if you ask anybody from the LWO, go ahead and ask Rey Mysterio, go ahead and ask Santos Escobar, go ahead and ask LA Knight, ask the Usos, ask Natalia, ask TJ, ask, you know, anybody who ever actually worked with us, ask the Brawling Brutes, ask Seamus, ask Drew McIntyre, <laughs> ask Ricochet, ask anybody who you want. They loved working with us, right? And they, they they would do it again in a heartbeat, right? So, like, you know, I, the coolest thing for me is the fact that, like, people that I grew up idolizing, like Rey Mysterio. Like, Rey Mysterio is the reason that I watched WCW. I used to only watch WWF as a kid. And then my buddy came over and was like, yo, I got this video I want to show you. And it's Halloween Havoc 98. It's Rey versus Eddie, right? Yeah. So I had never seen anything like this before in my life and that was like a lot of people just got really into wcw because the nwo kevin nash and he said i got into wcw because of ray mysterio and i told him that actually at his hall of fame induction and he and he was like it like took him aback to realize that like someone who was still like at at his level one of his peers you know that he is working with now you know that just got to wwe like I, he's the reason why I started on this path. You know what I'm saying? So like, I love Ray to death and, you know, it, it's cool to be able to have those moments with those guys because, you know, when when the release did happen, like all those people reached out to me and all of them were like, oh man, this isn't fair. We'll see you again. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's the cool thing is that I, I'm not, would I still love to be there? Absolutely, who wouldn't? But at the end of the day, man, 2024 is going to be a good year for Dolly. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't sure. All right. I love that. You're just spitting names out. You know the facts. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's cool to see them because you speak your mind. You don't hold anything back. And I love seeing a super fellow, crazy, blunt human being in my presence because some people are heat magnets for no reason. And all I've got to say to the trolls is if you don't like honesty, then that's your problem. So when was the moment that you simply just realized you didn't really give a damn anymore and you were going to keep it straight, whether in person with people or online. Man, the, the honestly, it happened before I ever started wrestling. Wow. I mean, because okay. you got to think about it like this. Like when I was in high school, okay, so when I was in middle school, right, I was a big kid. But Gonzaga, the high school I went to, is like known for like producing professional athletes. Like, for example, Caleb Williams, who's the number one quarterback prospect in college right now. He won the Heisman last year. He, he's at USC. Uh, he went to my high school, right? St- uh, like, he's one of the biggest names in football right now. He's just one example. <laughs> so when I was in middle school, people would say, oh, man, you're not going to go to Gonzaga. And I was like, why not? Like, oh, man, you're not good enough. I'm like, oh, okay. So then I go to Gonzaga, and I'm on varsity as a freshman, right? So then while I'm in high school, I'm playing against these guys, these All-Americans, these other guys at Damathic, Good Council, St. John's, these other big schools that also produce a lot of pro talent. And people, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to go D1. Da, da, da. You ain't going to go D1, man. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't got it. 
I go to Maryland. I start as a freshman. You know what I'm saying? So then mm -hmm. I'm in college. I'm in college and I'm playing well and I'm freshman uh, All-American and I'm academic All-American and I'm doing all these things that you're supposed to do and blah, 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 blah. And, and the whole time I'm like, yeah, man, I'm going to go to the league. People are like, you ain't going to go to the league, man. You're not going to the NFL. You can't make it in the NFL. So then I go to the league and that's been six years in the NFL. So like along the way, and I can't pick a specific moment, but along that whole path, probably somewhere during my NFL career, I was just like, bro, these, all these people tell me all these things I can't do, and then I do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's really when I started, like, I've been making music since I was 12, but I dropped my first album while I was still in the NFL, because I was like, people tell me I can't make music now. All right, cool, then I'm gonna make music. So I drop an album, and then my NFL career ends, and I'm like, Man, I always wanted to wrestle. I'm gonna go to WWE, and I'm training people. Like, man, you know it's hard. It's hard to go to WWE. It's hard to get in there. You gotta blah blah blah. And then within a year of wrestling, I'm in WWE. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what these people think about me because they wish they could live ten percent of the life that I've lived. Oh, so good. <laughs> no, but I, it's interesting because I. It's some people say don't be driven by bitterness or spite. I, however, am very driven by those two things. And so anytime, hey, it, it was it was in high school all the time. And I told people I'm going to go into music. So originally start with music before wrestling, same path as you, and interview musicians. They laughed, they scoffed, they had all their little remarks. And then I was doing it. And next thing you know, they were calling me up. Hey, you got two tickets to this or that? Well, I'm Man. hanging in the back with that artist. And it was Man. just so fulfilling. And that's just, it's, it's honestly one of the best driving factors. As long as it's not with hate towards anyone and it's just to like move forward and prove your point, I love it. So hearing that come from you, I can't tell you how much I relate. And that's it. And the same thing just in the music realm, like there's there's nerdy wrestling fans that don't know anything about hip hop that'll pretend that I'm not a good rapper, right? Yeah. But like Nipsey Hussle says I'm a good rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like long live Nipsey. Like me and Nip, Nip listen to me now that I do these Friday rap videos all the time, like everybody's like, wow, your videos are so dope. The first one I ever did was on a Nipsey Hustle beat and Nipsey was the one that showed me love. And was like, yo, that's dope, keep doing that. Nipsey Hustle is the reason why I kept doing it because he was the one that was like, yo, you keep, keep doing this because you got something here. You know what I'm saying? So like, he a legend. DJ Who Kid loves me. We, put, we putting the project out together. Like these are legends in hip hop. Bun B legend in hip-hop loves you know what i'm saying so like why would i care what basement man 69 x 69 says about my music bro it's just come on man i'm not tripping off these dudes yeah it's, it's fun for me to listen to because especially when it comes to the rapping you have this really cheeky humorous bitter way of delivering these verses mm -hmm. and it makes you very different than a lot of other rap that i'm listening to so i'll be mm -hmm. digging the flow one second then i'm laughing at a lyric the next and it's something special so have you always had that ability to do that kind of crossover because i know you mentioned there doing this since you were 12 that's a, that's a long time to hone a skill and it makes sense why you're so yeah. good at it now. Yeah, it's honestly, you know, I it's just the confidence in the flow. Like I like I said, I've been rapping since I was 12, but like if I, I go back and listen to some of my old stuff that I used to make, and like it's clear that I can rap my ass off, right? Like I can rap. I'm a really good rapper, right? But like at back then, I'm like trying to prove how good of a rapper I am with every single line that I say, instead of like appreciating the opportunity to set up funny line because like if you think about uh, uh god's plan by drake perfect example drake has so many different songs that are so much better than that song right but she said do you love me i told her only partly i only love my bed and my mom i'm sorry like that's not a incredibly dope line but that's the line that everybody remembers you know what i'm saying like that's the line that when it comes on people are screaming it in the club you know what I'm saying? so it's like I, pe I peep game. I recognize the fact that it's like, yeah, prove that you can rap. Prove that you're not just out here rhyming cat and hat and bat. You know what I'm saying? But like, but then give the listener something to make them like, oh, wow, that was good. Or, oh, that was funny. And that makes someone a fan. That's how you actually make fans and not just people that are like, yo, that, that was a good rap. And then mm -hmm. never think about it again. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's really just part of technique and things that I've been 
honing my craft. It's just like wrestling. Like you get better with time, just like interviewing. I know you will know that too. It's like, just like making music. You get better with time. And like, yes, I did a Halloween verse a couple of weeks ago. And that verse I actually wrote like five years ago, right? Really? Like you can't tell that I wrote it five years ago because it's so dope and it's so cool and it's and it was on the monster beat. And it was like me, in my mind, it's like my version of being Nicki Minaj on that song, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, it, you can't tell that I wrote it five years ago, but like, it was a five-year-old verse and it sounds amazing still to this day. But like, I hear that verse now and I did it because it was Halloween themed and it's still really good. But like, I don't even write like that no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've evolved from that five years now. Like. Other people might not be able to recognize that, which is why I can put it out and people are like, oh my God, this is amazing. Even though it's a five-year-old verse, right? But like, to me, like I hear it and I even had to like, when I recorded it, I had to like change up some of the lines because like, I just don't talk like that anymore. You know what I'm saying? But like, that's my own personal growth that I have over time. So that's how you really get better. I feel like between the stuff that's pre-done in terms of stuff you've written in the past and the freestyling, mm -hmm. like when I think of the freestyle aspect, I just imagine that'd be the sickest party trick ever, just being able to break out into it at any moment. Is that something that you mm -hmm. have done over the years, just in tr like terms of trying to impress somebody or impress people? You, you know what the funny thing is, is this is a true story. Um, we were on the bus in Germany um, last Halloween for WWE tour, and you know, uh, it's a perfect example. Jay Uso is in the back of the bus and he's about to, he, he's like, oh, I need a speaker, I need a speaker. Everybody's back there, we we drinking after the show, it's a good time, blah, 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 blah. Jay's on the bus, Ray's on the bus, Santos on the bus, Jimmy's on the bus. Good vibes, you know what I'm saying? Hero on the bus, good vibes. So we, we sliding and he's like, yo, give me a speaker. I'm trying to put on a beat so we can freestyle. They're like, Dollar, you go first, you go first. And I. I know this, I know this trick. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd been here before. I freestyled a lot of times at parties, on tours, on buses and stuff with the guys in the locker room. Like, and I know after I go, people don't want to go. Like I I know they can't after live I up. Go, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know after I go that nobody wants to rap. Like I know that. That's how it happens every time I go. Unless I'm with like real spitters. Like I've been in situations where there's some real rappers in the room that can really go just like me. And then we can go back and forth. But if you're just doing it as a little jokey, ha, a ha ha, you know, passing the time, you hear me going, you're like, nah, I don't want to follow that. Like, so I'm telling Jay, I'm telling Jay, I'm like, yo, y'all go first, I'll go last. Da, da, da. They're like, nah, we want to hear what you got. We want to hear what you got. I'm like, bro, y'all go first. I pro I'm going to go. I promise. Just you're like, you first. don't want to hear what I've got. Not yet. Yeah, y'all <laughs> go first, right? And then I I'll go after that, right? They're like, no, we want to hear you, dollar. We hear you. And I was like, all right, cool. So then I tried to tell them, right? So then they put a beat on and I flow for the whole beat, probably like four minutes straight, just going, boom. The beat changes to another beat and I don't stop. I just keep going, keep going. And I'm going. And then afterward, after I got tired of just rapping and just showing off and showing how nice I was, was I was just like, all right, cool. And then I was sat there and waited for somebody else to go. And then they just put a different song on and just let the party go. And I was like, see, I knew this was going to happen, man. I knew this was going to Y'all don't be listening to me. I knew this was going to happen. I was trying to tell y'all, bro, I'm really nice with it. So, like, if we want to freestyle forever, we can. But, like, mm -hmm. instead, how about y'all go so we can get the vibes right? And then when I go, it's even more like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they ain't going to hear me. They know now, though. You tried to warn him. You did. I did. I did. I swear I did. <laughs> did it ever get to a point where you and Us were able to go back and forth or he just knew he'd get destroyed? No, it's not even. And the thing is, it's not like I'm rapping at him. Of course I'm just not. Rapping in, you know what I'm saying? I'm rapping in general about the things. Like, I'm rapping about the things we see on the bus, the tour we on. Like, just being cool, rapping cool shit. So, like, when it's, it gets to a point where, like, people don't want to follow that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he... Eventually, like at a later date, they'll put the beat on and they'll like freestyle in the locker room and then they'll be like, dollar, dollar, come here, come here, come here. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that was how it was in the NFL too. I used to freestyle. I posted a video on Twitter, like maybe last week, I think, of me freestyling in the locker room when I was on the Giants. I got, I, I used to freestyle in the locker room all the time because to me and people that know me in WWE know this too, like I'm a locker room guy. And what I mean by that is like, I like the vibes to be right. 
know what I'm saying? Like even even if you even if your match was average, and when you come back through the curtain, you're never gonna hear me be like, yo, you need to do this, 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 and this, because everybody else is gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm gonna be like, yo, this was cool. Good job. And leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like to build morale. So like when the guys or people want to get the vibes right in the locker room or it's too quiet and somebody wants to make everything come together, like I'm the guy that's like trying to hype everybody up. I'm the guy that's like, oh, I'm a rap so that everybody's like, oh, yeah. And then the vibes <laughs> change. You know what I'm saying? So like that's always been me. Going back to when I was in high school, that was me. So it's like I I go out of my way to try to build the team up because I know wrestling, people don't see it like this because – Sadly, in the wrestling business, everybody's out for themselves, and it's not, yeah, I can't say sadly because it is a. It, I can't say sadly because it is a business, right? It's a business, and you got to get yours, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a business, but, like, but a lot of people don't have to be dicks, you know. Yeah, yeah, like you, we can. The tide raises all boats, so like if if we working together for this thing, we got to make sure that ours, it, you know, makes what they doing over here look better. You know what I'm exactly. saying, like. They only, and a lot of times in wrestling, they only care about, well, don't do this move because I'm doing this move tonight. Like, bro, the moves don't matter. Like, the move, like, yeah, the moves matter. You got to be able to do them. But, like, real rap, the stuff in between the moves matters more. The promos matter more. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, th that's the stuff that matters. It, 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 the, you got to move the crowd. That's Those are the moves that matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's the thing that a lot of people lose. And the thing is, is like, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, going back to before I could even walk, before I could talk, like, my whole life. So, like, for me to be in the position I am now and have opportunities to look out for, you know, young talent now, especially, like, you know, I'm about to be on the road, and I know how it is. I've been on the indies before. A lot of people don't know that. I was on the indies before I signed the wrestling to WWE the first time. I did the indies for a year. I did the indies for the nine months that oh, between the first and the second time. So it's like, I've been on the indies before. I love talking to young talent on the indies because, bro, I'm, I'm learning this too. I've been doing wrestling for five years. I'm still learning. You can, you ask Edge, I mean, Adam Copeland, you can go ahead and ask Adam. And Adam will tell you himself, he's still learning. And he's been doing it damn near 30 years, right? So, like, yeah. ask Taker. Taker will tell you, you got to get better every time. These are conversations I've had with these guys. John Cena, you got to, like, these are, I've had these conversations with them. So it's like, I'm still getting better. But just their looks at me and how they decipher the information. Like, when I go to ROW, when I go to the row in Houston at Booker T School, like, and I talk to the kids and I train with the kids. And there, and I say kids, but they grown adults. You know what I mean? Like, I talk with them, and they're, like, soaking in all this information. I'm still learning, too, but that don't mean we can't learn from each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing is that, like, I think the best teachers are always learning. And I'm learning. I'm learning, too. Like, there's things that I didn't listen to my first year in wrestling that, like, now I'm like, you big dumb idiot. You should have been doing this. You know what I'm saying? That's always you know what I'm the saying? way, like, though, right? And the, and at the, at the start, in a way, you feel like you know everything. You're coming in. You're you yeah. have something to prove. And then over time, you just release any of that ego, and it's all yeah. just about uplifting. And I feel like that's a maturity thing too. And sometimes people it hits them, and sometimes it just doesn't. You know, whether yeah. they're in the business for five years or thirty. So. Um, it's yeah. just very cool to talk to you and hear the fact that you do want to uplift, you do want to help. Mm -hmm. And obviously that comes from not only within wrestling, within your time um, in football, but also with what's going down this Saturday. So ah, what AJ, a time, what a professional. What I do. No, I just want to say though, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been such an absolute pleasure. You're awesome. And next time, if we ever get to do this in person, you bet your ass I'm bringing some beats for you and you're, I'm going to make you freestyle. Oh, please, <laughs> man. I, no problem at all. I could go for days. You know what I'm saying? That's oh, I know. Issue. I know. And this definitely won't be the last time. Right? 2024, we're going to do this more often. I promise you. I love it. Well, to everyone watching, this has been AJ Francis. Be sure to check him out at the University of Maryland this Saturday, November 18th to support the canned food drive and hit up aliciatoot.com for plenty more exclusive interviews and features. See you next time, folks. Thank you.